Hi, my name is Kathy Tanner and I have a business called Harmony Hand Dyes. I sell some quilting products online, but the ones I'm going to discuss today are the dyes and dyeing chemicals that I use. There are many different methods of getting the dye onto your fabric. The samples I'm showing are 100% cotton fabric. Using immersion dyeing, application dyeing, or thickened dye, you can get some amazing results. You need the dye and soda ash to react in order to create the permanent bond. Other products are optional but relatively cheap methods of enhancing the process. Urea wicks the solution to the fabric and salt pushes dye particles out of the water, with the only place it can go being the fabric. There are different types of immersion dyeing, but MX Procyon dye is often used by hand dyers with low water immersion method. Fabric is often placed in plastic Ziploc baggies or small plastic containers. I prefer the baggies and I rinse them out and reuse them many times. I sell the individual products, but I also make up kits for dyeing 12-step color wheels of fat quarters of fabric. Check out my other video called Dyeing a 12-step color wheel. Application dyeing usually finds a squirting or pouring dye on our fabric. Using a dye solution with a ratio of about 2 tablespoons of dye powder, 2 tablespoons of urea, and 1 half cup of water is a good solution. I like to pre-soak my fabric for at least 15 minutes in 1 quarter to 1 half cup of soda ash mixed with 1 gallon of hot water. Some dyers add soda ash to the dye solution and some add it to the fabric after they've applied dye. Remember to use a NEOS NEOSH dust mask when measuring or mixing dry dye. Once it's incorporated into the water, you can remove the mask. There are many ways to prepare your fabric. Shibori is a Japanese term for creating a pattern on fabric by binding, stitching, folding, twisting, compressing, or clamping. This sample called cinnamon bun shows the fabric grabbed in the center and then rotated around like a cinnamon bun. You can use elastic bands or string to secure it. Squirt a couple of different kinds of dye on in sections or you can do a form of immersion dye by dipping it in buckets of dye. Cover it with plastic and let it cure 24 hours then rinse until the water runs clear. Heat set in a hot dryer 30 minutes. Another term used in dyeing is batik. It's a form of resist. We often think so of wax used to cover fabric where we want to resist the penetration of color but there are other methods of creating a resist. Various pastes can be used or string can be used to tie or sew a design into the fabric and create an area where it will resist the dye. If you pre-soak fabric in soda ash, then scrunch it in a small container, you can squirt a couple of dye colors on it. Cover it with plastic to keep it damp and cure it for 24 hours. Don't peek or open it. It's like a present and you don't get to see it until you rinse it out. Dry it in a hot dryer for 30 minutes. These are some examples of folded, scrunched, and tied fabric. I prefer to mix my own dyes using primary colors. I particularly like to work with analogous colors. If you mix complementary colors, you often get muddy colors where they run into each other. Using the same mixture of dye for the other application methods, you can also do snow dyeing. Pre-soak your fabric in soda ash solution and place the fabric on a rack or a pan that is tilted inside a plastic tote. Place about 2 inches of snow on top. Dry snow works best as it doesn't dilute the dye as much as wet snow does. Squirt on the dye and if you can cover it, the melting process will be slower than allowing the dye. It will then squirm into the fabric. Once the dye has melted, cover the fabric in plastic and cure for 24 hours before rinsing. Most dyers agree that fabric cures best at 21 degrees Celsius or 70 Fahrenheit or even higher. But snow dyeing throws a curve into this concept. The sample shown had rust and fuchsia squirted on. Just Google for more ideas and techniques. This is another example showing the setup in my laundry tub. I used 3 or 4 inches of snow and the same rust dye with some green squirted on. The extra snow diluted the dye. I decided I would prefer 2 inches of snow for stronger colors. These are two samples of the same rust and green dye squirted on with the two different methods, scrunching and snow dyeing. Some dyers believe that snow dyeing wastes a lot of dye, but if you like the results, you may think the cost is worth it. You can also mix dye and paint it directly on fabric. I pre-soak the fabric in soda ash, but I let it dry first if I don't want the dye diluted when I paint it on. You pre-soak the fabric, then paint it wet. The dyes will bleed a little bit into the fabric. 
One recipe I use is about one teaspoon of dried dye powder mixed in one half cup of warm soy milk. Some people make their own soy milk, but I just buy the seven gram protein soy beverage at the grocery store. One delightful accident occurred when I used the dye and soy milk mixture and placed it on coroplast or plastic cardboard. I put it in the sun. A leaf fell on it and where the leaf covered the fabric it was helio or sun printed on the fabric. I then began experimenting and placing leaves on the fabric, then placing it in the sun. I also scrunched fabric and placed it in the sun. The high ridges are darker in color and the low covered scrunched areas are light. If you thicken dye, you can do screen printing or stamping. I like pre-mixed sodium alginate to thicken dye. You have to mix it at least 24 hours before you plan to use it as it's quite lumpy to start with but becomes very smooth if you stir it every couple of hours and let it sit overnight. For further instructions, go to my website and click on screen printing. It takes more preparation to get ready to start but you can create some really neat designs. My instructions are for temporary screens. They're intended for a few uses in one session. The frame and mesh screen can be reused a lot, but the design is temporary, like leaves, paper shapes, masking tape. Permanent screens are intended to be used many times. They can be made from photo or light sensitive exposure on special film. You can order them from custom or commercial suppliers. There's a product on the market called Udo that it enables you to make your own permanent screens. Just Google to learn about permanent screens, either do it yourself or suppliers. When you pre-soak fabric in soda ash, then dry it, it's a little wrinkled. You can stretch it and pin it to foam boards, then screen print on it or stamp the fabric. I use thickened dye and using a foam paintbrush, I paint the dye onto the stamp, then stamp the fabric. Whenever I've tried to dip the stamps in dye, I get globs and drips. Once the fabric is just damp to the touch, cover it with plastic and cure it for 24 hours. Rinse and dry for 30 minutes in a hot dryer. Just a word about rinsing. For all methods of immersion or application dyeing, after the fabric has cured, if you want the fabric right away, you have to rinse and rinse and rinse and rinse, starting with cold water and moving to hot. If you have more time and want to use less water, you can rinse the fabric a few times, then soak it for a few hours or overnight. I place color groups together in buckets and add dyer soap or regular dish soap like palm olive or dawn, but not the oxy types or bleach types of dish soap. I probably squirt about a tablespoon in the bucket of water. After a few hours of soaking with just a few more rinses, your water will be running clear. I do one final wash in a washing machine with about a tablespoon of dyer soap like Synthropol or TNA. Dry it in a hot dryer for 30 minutes. Dyeing is an art, not a science. If you talk to 10 different dyers, there will probably be 10 different variations. Some dyers weigh their dyes, some measure with measuring spoons. Some swear by the addition of salt and some never use salt. Some pre-soak their fabric in soda ash and some add it with dye and some add it after the dye. These are my methods of dyeing fabric. Using MX Pro C on dye, you can do immersion methods or application methods or thickened application methods. The internet is just full of ideas. Check out my other slide video called Dyeing a 12-step color wheel. Starting with three primary colors, you can mix 12 colors and make sets of dark or light intensity. Please check out my website and click on Instructions.